Hi guys, uh, Vince here. This is my first video for Mr. Pickle's Happy Fun Times, and I wanted to celebrate my first video by going over a book that was given to me today by a customer of mine that is called The Official Indian Arrowheads Identification and Price Guide by Robert M. Overstreet referred to as the Overstreet Guide. Now this is a ninth edition and everyone that I've seen is very similar. Uh, I think it has mostly the same articles inside. Uh, you can see there, I've zoomed in on the ninth edition, the ultimate reference to the United States points types. Um, it's a very cool book on the cover. You see some nice pieces here and all these pieces are submitted by enthusiasts that have either contacted him or, you know, brought their collections to him to have photographed and featured in the book. Uh, but this is some very cool stuff. You know, when you open it up, there are some advertisements and such. Uh, and then here's the initial page it says ninth edition by Robert. M. Overstreet. Uh, see if we can get in on that a little better. Special contributors to this edition, Richard M. Gramley, PhD, and Duncan Caldwell, uh, and then several advisors to the book. Um, here we have a map that shows the regions, because this book is broken up by regions. Uh, here's where we are. We are in western Idaho, so this will be the far west. Uh, and then also I've been into eastern Idaho, which is the northern high plains. And I've also been to the desert southwest, which are all cool places. You find some really neat stuff out there. So anyway, uh, like I said, there's lots of advertisements and just a lot of good information in this book. I'm going to prop it up so we have a better angle on it see what we can use here use these pliers hopefully that'll work kind of kind of anyway so uh this first article in here is called paleo american recycled artifacts fluted points and drills from the veil vale clovis site which is a site i believe in colorado where they found a large cache of Clovis points and tools, which the Clovis people are thought to be some of the oldest people in the United States up until recently. There's some new evidence suggesting that humans could have been here far longer than 12 to 13,000 years ago, all the way up to 120,000 years ago, but that's still being debated. When we're not here to debate that, I just wanted to show you this book. So as we flipped through, um, just to get an idea, these are some of the, what some of the pages look like, and it's got a lot of information on here. Like, we'll zoom in on this. Uh, forgive me for the light. Um, so this is a Kanawha, i butchering that word, early archaic 9,000 to 5,000 years before present. Let's see if this light is. Um, yeah, that didn't really help. But, uh, there, there's the flash. So we can see that a little better. Um, so what I'll do is I will just skip over to my section that I wanted to look at um, and show you how this works. So we're going to look for the, since we are in the far west, see, we are in western Idaho, that is the far west. So when you open up this chapter or section, what you see is this thumbnail guide. And what this is, is it's these are at approximately 30 percent of actual size and what you do is you basically look for the type of head that you have or spear tip or tool and then once you locate it in here like for instance let's say we found a columbia plateau um so what you'll do is if you find one that resembles that and imagine 30 is about three times as big, so it'd be about that big. You know, we'll come over here, and this is all alphabetical, and we'll look up the Columbia Plateau.
and it's fairly easy. See some beautiful stuff in here. Um, just some great, like those are some paleo Clovis points, like the fluted. God, I would love to find something like that. And remember, you know, you should always have permission when you're searching for this kind of stuff. And if you don't have permission, you should leave it. It's nice to look at. Anyway, here we go. So we are at the Columbia Plateau, and there's several different types of types of points here. Um, this is that one that we were looking at, I believe, one of these. Uh, so what it does is I'll zoom in on a different one. We'll zoom in on this guy right here since it's nice contrast. And so what it does is it tells you generally, it will give you a nice example and tell you some, some uh, features of the point, like this one's a serrated edge. And right next to it, you'll see this one right here. It says it's made out of jasper. And it'll say if it's made out of agate or obsidian. And then, so down here, you'll see a G10. And I'm not quite familiar with what that is yet, but this is a price. Now this is from 2005, so this is a rough estimate on price, but I don't sell my pieces, so this is really irrelevant to me. It just gives me a good idea if I should really lock it down and not show people or what. And then it shows where this particular point was found, and so you can kind of count on finding similar points in that area. So this was found in Curry County, Oregon. And then down here at the bottom of each little section, there's like a location and then a description. Like this says, Coos and Curry County, Oregon and Northern Washington, or Northwestern California, and then a description. A medium sized triangular dart knife with a convex to straight blade edge. The stem is broad and triangular to tapering and rounded. Shoulders are barbed to horizontal. Many are serrated. ID key, broad tapering to rounded stem. It's a very cool book. Uh, most of it's in black and white, but there are color sections at the beginning and the end of the book, and I will show you those. Let's like zoom out a little bit, so we'll just go straight to the end. Now, these aren't gonna give you the prices, I believe. This is more a chronological gallery of point types. So it starts with the oldest and moves into the newest. Um, there's just some beautiful stuff here from, from people's collections, you know. Um, like I said, these are all volunteered in or they belong to Overstreet or some of his people. But there are ads in here that say you can submit your own heads for filming and use in the book if he likes them. Um, I haven't met anyone who's done this, but like, look at this. It's beautiful right there. You know, and this is all possible to find here in the United States. It's just great stuff. But this is a great reference to, to kind of check out what you found and see what you have, you know. If you're into it like I am and my friends, you know, we're really into the history of this stuff. If you think about it, you find something that's a couple thousand years old. Um, you're probably the first person to touch it in 2000 years for one. You're also, if you're, you know, Caucasian like me, you're the only Caucasian person to touch it ever. And, um, you know, these are just a true testament to the, the craftsmanship that these people had, you know, and like, I doubt, if anything, that they had a boring life. Um, I'm sure it was very fulfilling and full of joy and, you know, satisfaction, I think, especially when you see tools like these, like they made these with rocks. This is pre-metal age, you know, this is the stone age, but this is just the colors, like that striped, you know, like, like this bright orange and red, you know, and yellow, like, it's just amazing. Like their culture was so amazing and full of color and vibrant, you know, and this is, they traded a lot of rocks to make stuff, you know, all over the United States. So you'll find rocks that originated like in Kentucky or the plains all the way over in the Northwest, you know, and vice versa, or you'll find obsidian where there is an obsidian for a couple hundred miles. And this is just like an index of point types, which is very useful, you know, like, um, back here there's more ads and stuff but when we go back to the beginning um after that article i was showing you you know it starts showing some of the tools and stuff like uh, it's not just arrowheads it's also scrapers like there's a scraper you know and we found stuff like this out in the woods you know um these are all this is like a crescent scraper god they're beautiful too like that's a very cool, fulsome tip. That's 11,000 years before present. 
just amazing stuff here and that's another one if you ever find a fluted a fluted edge or a fluted side you know you have stumbled upon to something wonderful um and you'll know you'll know right off the bat that you found something or you haven't it's sometimes you know it's kind of iffy but if it's iffy i throw it back you know i don't need the iffy stuff it just collects and becomes flower pot rocks as my friend calls them several friends call them but if you just look at some of these you know these are not illustrations these are real pieces that people have collected over the years you know and just remember on federal land it's not legal to keep this stuff but on private land if you have permission or if you own the land you know you can keep it um, as long as you're not stumbling onto a site that's an archaeological site you know um, that's beautiful right there I'd love to find something like that um, these these are beautiful and these are the actual size so if you think about that that's that's a big big point probably a spear tip or a knife blade um, a lot of what we see we think are like spear tips or arrowheads are also they're actually knife blades which is really cool because in the book you'll see things that are hafted and that means attached to a piece of wood or antler um, you'll also find axes and here's a reference for stuff but um, you know this explains like the different types of heads, you know, and actually walks you through and shows you the bevels and, and like the hafting marks and, you know, it shows you stuff to look for, flaking types. These drawings apply to points of all sizes, you know, shows you where they come together in the center. You know, this is just a wealth of information. Like this, for instance, if you can see that, that shows you like, uh, so these are what they call fire treated or fire damaged points so if there's a fire in the area you know and it went over the land and this was sitting on the surface you can get this pitting and stuff and it's really interesting to see you know um there's also impact fractures where they hit like a bone or a rock you know and they just they break they shatter their stone you know they're rigid um buying points which i don't ever get into that i only look for stuff i've made now i have a brother he likes to uh make his own points to kill time you know and he has a lot of fun doing that um but when you're actually trying to identify stuff this book is really helpful now these over here these are hafted what we call hafted points and you can find stuff like this out there generally it can't be exposed or else the wood and organic material will decay quite rapidly over time but um like these were probably found in a cave or in like a a rat hole or uh, you know a hole in some rock but this is this is like a tool it says uh a complete knife with bone handle and flint blade recovered in eastern colorado note the drilled hole in the handle so that was a drilled hole they made a drill bit out of stone attached it to a stick figured out a way to drill that hole i mean it looks like it was made you know with machine and it wasn't um so anyway i just wanted to give you a quick overview of this book i know i'm already 13 minutes into it but still um we'll try to keep it as short as possible which is about now it's it's ending pretty soon anyway i hope you enjoyed this i'll just flip through it for a minute and show you some of the neat stuff that's in here uh and you'll find a lot of the same types in different areas you know you just got to get out there and look because it's all out there and every time it rains it uncovers new stuff so um check it out and don't forget the uh the robert m overstreet ninth edition indian arrowheads identification and price guide and i know there's up to 13 editions possibly one more um but they're all about the same i would say the only thing that really changes is the prices so why don't you uh let me know what you think in the comments and have a great day.